My name is Anna Barnett. I am a cook and food writer, um, and this is my space. This is the recording studio that we live above. I have lived here for maybe six, seven years. It's an old pub. It was a, in fact, it was a gay and lesbian pub back in the 70s, one of the first in East London, so we're very proud of that. I live with my housemate who actually owns the pub, who is the lead singer of The Feeling. He has his music studio downstairs, so it's often very noisy. We also live with um, a friend of ours who is a playwright. So everyone's like very creative and you always feel like you're not doing enough to keep up. Um, and then my husband. So let's go to the lounge first. This is our kind of TV room and den um, where we spend many a hangover, hungover day. Come winter time, we all just kind of bed in and have dinner in front of the telly. I don't know, watch film marathons. I would say my decorating style has definitely become more, or less eclectic maybe, and more simplistic and minimal. Um, I think for many years I would go to the car boot sale probably every weekend and just pick up old vintage pieces of crockery or vases or just anything and everything. I have enough crockery to feed 70 people. I probably still have quite a lot of goggle jugs. It's like a jug that when you pour the water, they Luggle. A really amazing old Portuguese style lamp, which we still have. It's just very elegant, very lovely. I've got like a crazy orange terracotta lamp as well. I still have that. So I do, st I still have it, but I think just like my next space will just be much more pared back and much more clean and decluttered. <laughs> so the furniture in this room is all G plan. The Dan told me about this, but I'm always really terrible at remembering. But I think the cabinet there, it was in like one of the Carry On episodes and he got it from like one of the studios that were doing a big sale of all the props. The dog statue is nothing like our dog, but we did used to say that he had eyes like our old housemate. So we used to call that dog Mikey. Um, this is Ted's chair, which is the dog. Um, if he's naughty or if he's just being a pain, uh, this is where he's put and you can just say go on your chair and he just kind of trots over and sits on his chair so this is kind of his spot hence why we've got different fabric on the bottom where he kind of scratches to make his little bed uh, probably more defiantly than just to kind of get cozy um, there's a small overspill of my cookery books here this is actually one of my favorite kind of everything Italian, but this, the Italian cookery course is one of my favorite Italian cookery books. So anyone that's just starting out, I definitely recommend that one. I would say my cookery book collection is my most kind of prized possessions. Um, and I kind of like just having them there. <laughs> so I think, and also they kind of work as kind of part of the decoration. And that's, I've got a whole nother kind of couple of shelves downstairs as well. And then a stack by my bed. <laughs> <laughs> Some in the lounge, <laughs> they just kind of end up spreading themselves all over. Other than the kitchen, I'd probably say that this area is probably my kind of favourite, my other favourite part of the house, just because it's so bright. These, <laughs> these sofas are very comfortable for just laying out paper in hand, uh, coffee, and just relaxing. And come Christmas time, we put a huge tree right in front of the middle window. And so this room feels very cozy as well in the winter with the fire on. This is the space where we would do supper clubs. So we can do a large table along here for about 35, I think we've got kind of in one table, and then we kind of go off into there. But if we're doing kind of supper clubs where it's not just one big kind of communal table, we can do about 70, which is mad. Um, and probably the most we've ever done. And I think it was Christmas and we just, I just kept saying yes. <laughs> so people just kept turning up and we, yeah. And it's also a nightmare cooking for people. Uh, because we have the kind of Argo Raven stove, which is terrible to cook on. And then, uh, yeah, cooking for that amount of people is complete chaos. And just having that amount of people in your house is also completely chaotic. I would say over the past years, things have changed a little bit just because everyone's got a bit older. So it's definitely calmed down. <laughs> There's definitely less parties. Um, I don't do as many like supper clubs here as I used to because that used to just take over the entire house. It was just crazy. Um, so a bit more selective with kind of how and where I do events now. We used to all sit around and have dinners together and I guess that just happens a little bit less now because everyone's kind of 
busy doing their own things and really focusing on work. Um, and so I guess the parties and the big dinner parties happen a little bit less. The dog toys. <laughs> we have Ted's selection, favourite selection of dog toys. Uh, the only actual animal toy that's survived, I think two years now we're on with the, the roadkill. Uh, his blanket that he came home with when he was a puppy that he now likes to get amorous with post dinner. <laughs> so that's beautiful. Um, and then dining table. Uh, this is actually an amazing table that Dan got that we can, it extends, you can get about 14 people around the table which is amazing. Uh, especially if you're doing like smaller more intimate dinner parties or um, where I've done like small events and kind of cookery classes that type of thing is really nice to have quite a big group of people around one table that kind of doesn't take over the whole room. Um, the jukebox is amazing, Dan is obsessed with the jukebox. Um, and so that just has a whole load of old classics from kind of Elvis to Bowie to Fleetwood Mac. But I would say the piano is the kind of the sweetest, oh, the sweetest addition to this room just because uh, Dan is an incredible uh, musician and pianist. And we used to, I think that's probably one of like a favorite pastime of just getting him to do like the fastest thing he can do on the piano or just like the most impressive thing and he would like tap away. Yeah, I guess this is just a really lovely space to share and to entertain and to have people round and to, people, to have people enjoy it with you, I guess is the nicest thing about this house. Depending on the time of year, but Sundays are, you know, a day where we just try and keep it pretty calm. So that after a big dog walk, I have picked up some flowers from the flower market and then, We'll cook a big lunch and maybe if it's winter we'd sit in front of the fire or you know summertime we'll just sit with all the windows up, radio on, read the papers, just I'm definitely getting old. <laughs> like, oh no. Um, my old housemate and now very good friend uh, who now lives in New York but he um, bought it home one day and we've just ever, like never got rid of it um, but that was I don't know 10, 12 years ago like probably 12 years ago a long time. Uh, but yeah, I'm still fond of it. He can stay. These are from the car boot and I did get these. I feel like they're a bit festive. <laughs> I don't know, this is just a bit of a collection of, you know, the clutter I was talking about. <laughs> this is probably a good selection of that. The old Victorian style dogs, they're a bit petrifying. Um, yeah, I feel like, I think I'd be all right to see this go now though. <laughs> I would show you my bedroom but I got back from holiday yesterday and it's a bit of a mess still. So I will show you my favourite room which is the kitchen. I recently cleared this out so I'm actually quite proud to show you my cupboard. <laughs> and this is it organised. I'll take you through it. At the bottom we've got jars. <laughs> uh, jars, some stray tins. Um, a lot of Asian kind of soy sauces, mirin. Um, this is baking. Flowers, this is just all different flower selection. This is uh, where the spices and the herbs kind of overrun from the jars on the shelf. Then up here is just different kind of grains and things in packets. So kind of rice and pasta, there's some rice noodles. Just if you know, we've got supplies. <laughs> the, the kitchen's my favorite room because I probably spend most of my time here. So I work from home and it means that I'll be recipe testing or be working kind of mainly cooking. Uh, so I'm in the kitchen a lot. Um, but it just feels like a really calm space. It's the place where everyone kind of congregates first and I have all my cookery books. I just have everything here. So I guess this just feels like my most homeliest kind of room of the house. At one point this was organized alphabetically. Uh, it's not anymore. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess this is my kind of selection of favourites mostly with a few odd random ones like quick and easy cooking, which I think my mum gave me, <laughs> so I don't know why that's in there, but from the 70s. Um, and then there's a few behind you actually that I just had upstairs that's like favourites. There's the Massimo Bottura one, which is, oh yeah, can I grab it, uh, which I love. It's called Never Trust a Skinny Italian Chef. and. I read it from front to back while we drove down through Italy and they actually signed it for me as well because we went to the restaurant. We did a two and a half hour detour to go to the restaurant um, and yeah, the head chef there uh, signed it. I was super excited. I was like, my husband just really embarrassed. So I was like, can I just have my book signed? And then this Hartwood one is amazing as well out in Mexico. 
Um, so it's just a really beautiful book that I actually got for my birthday. Um, but yeah, I guess I just feel like I start talking about these and normally I'd like sit down with the coffee and be like, okay, <laughs> like two hours pass and I'm still looking at cookery books. My favorite thing to cook in this kitchen is probably pasta. Um, we've got like a whole wooden chopping block. So it kind of, it's great for rolling up pasta and if you're making ravioli or anything like that. And I guess that's just probably my favorite thing to eat. <laughs> so I would go straight to pasta, anything Italian. Um, and this is like, we, we would always convene it like, I think I guess it's our spot for coffees, for catching up. Like when everyone's been running around doing their own things, everyone kind of meets back here, coffee in the morning, catch up. And especially at the weekends, that's when you can really be like, where have you been all week, or what's you know what's been going on with everybody else. The jugs. In fact, this was this is actually one of my favourite pieces of pottery. It's Moroccan, so it's Moroccan pottery. But I bizarrely got it in South Africa at this amazing vineyard which actually I also <laughs> got an amazing cookery book, which is Babel, which is the one just in the middle there, which is so beautiful. And the woman that set up the vineyard and did the restaurant, I think she used to be like the editor at Elle Decorations. This place is just so beautiful, like everything about this restaurant. They serve salads by color and it's all just the most beautiful. Like it's just is so, so stunning. But yeah, so they had all this Moroccan pottery. So there's that and then there's a bowl on the shelf there but uh, it's not watertight, because I was like, that would be so nice to have flowers in, <laughs> or water. Um, but instead, it's just a ornament. These are just bits and bobs that I've got from, these are all car boot stuff, uh, car boot. These were from a shop called Home Place, or is it Home Place Online, that do really lovely kind of homey bits. And in my mind, I was gonna do something where I was gonna hang jugs everywhere, or I was gonna have a shelf of jugs, but I just, I got distracted. I would say having a really, beautiful kitchen that feels a little bit old-fashioned as well which is such a nice kind of juxtaposition when you're in Hackney or you're in East London and then you have this kind of country kitchen it feels like quite a nice retreat from the chaos outside so I would say just having this space makes you feel like you want to be in it and you want to be working from here and yeah. <laughs>